This is Elias Dufexis. You're watching that Tom Clancy show. Wait a second. No, this- there we go. Streamlabs. You're being dumb, Streamlabs. Come on, I got a show to run here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of that Tom Clancy show. I am, of course, your lovable robot host. Did somebody break all of my triggers? I think so. I don't know who did it, but somebody broke all of my trigger volumes, and now I have to manually control cameras like some scrub. I don't know. But, Tony, so good to have you here. Yeah, I've been doing some experiments with times and stuff, and they've kind of been working. They kind of haven't. So I felt like doing today's show live. Thankfully, my guests, who I'm about to introduce you to, uh, were down for a live show. Timmy, so good to have you. Putty Cad, I feel like I should know your name, but it's it, like I should know who that is. It's, I think it is. Is that Rick? Is that Rick? I think that's Rick, but Rick, if it's you, it's good to see you. If you're not Rick, it's good to see you anyway, too. So I'm hilarious. <laughs> so everybody, welcome to the show. Congratulations, we've made it through another week of 2020. There's only about eh, rough math off the top of my head, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 13 of them left. Uh, I once did you a logo. Yes, it's somewhere. I don't know what happened to it, but like... As you can see, I'm looking a little bit different these days. Don't worry, I'm eating fine. I just am a robot now. So, uh, well, it's good to have you here, Rick. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, well, I could sit here and talk to you guys for a, a long, long time. Maybe that robot you threw that coffee cup at last time was in on the messing with your camera. You know what? That robot probably was. I don't know which one of you all it was. But you all leave my cameras alone. Got my eye on you. I bet you it was Elias. He's mad that I made an Adam Jensen joke the other day. So uh, before we go too off into the weeds here, uh, I want to go ahead and introduce my guest. My guest uh, today, like I can't got to come up with a better way of doing that. Uh, I want to introduce my guests. Uh, they are a pair of game developers uh, behind a game called Lacuna, which was entered in last month, or the most recent hashtag picture game. Uh, I know, surprise, surprise, me, the official hashtag picture game host, having picture game entrants on their show all the time. Well, uh, they're here with me today. They're a wonderful group of people I'm looking forward to introducing you to. Uh, so Bits and Pixels, please welcome... Uh, Shoot, I don't want Julian and Yasmin. I think I got that. I hope I did. <laughs> that was yeah, the wrong button. Good. Hold on. That's good. There we go. Uh, I had to give you the appropriate amount of applause that you were due. And uh, yeah, so I did the thing. Welcome to the show, you two. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Oh, hell yeah, man. Like, uh, I, I feel like I say this every time that we have uh, picture game uh, entrance on the show, and I mean it every time, but you know, you guys put your game out there, uh, it looked really cool, and I want to do what little I can to help support you, and yeah, so you are absolutely welcome on the show, and you are absolutely welcome on the show when you uh, get closer to release as well. Oh, cool. Nice. Thanks. So, Bam! I don't just bust that out for everyone. Uh, uh, mostly when I think your game looks really cool. And your game does look cool. But before we get talking about Lacuna, there is one question I ask all of my guests at the start of the show. And it's plain and simple. What are you two playing right now? Uh, I'm playing Hollow Knight. Hmm. Uh, right now. I'm actually also playing it live on stream. Um... Uh, I've I've been forcing myself to work through my pile of shame by just live streaming because I wouldn't I wouldn't get to all the games otherwise. So if I commit to a schedule and just tweak beforehand, I have to play. And right yeah. now that's Hollow Knight. I'm uh, playing Chinatown Detective Agency, the demo. Oh yeah. Huh. Nice. Pretty yeah, cool I I don't think that there I have enough years in my life left to work through my stack of shame. <laughs> yeah uh, and so i'm not even gonna try 
Uh, I'm also not <laughs> going to regret having paid money for all of those games because it means that developers out there hopefully have the opportunity to work on cool new stuff. Uh, but you know, now is such an interesting time because it's the Steam Fall celebration thingy. So there's a bunch of uh, people from like Picture Game and whatnot that have little demos out there available and whatnot on Steam. So you all should definitely check that out. Uh, like if you're a VR enthusiast like someone I know, uh, there's some really <laughs> cool VR titles out there. Um, but we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about you. Uh, so for our audience out there who may not have heard of Lacuna before, could you give us uh, just a quick idea as to what the game is? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a 2D sci-fi noir adventure game. Uh, it's very um, it's a story-driven game, lots of dialogues, and it in some way uh, is like a point-and-click game. But we like to say it's a point-and-click game without the pointing and clicking. So you control with a, a controller or a keyboard, and um, oh. yeah, it's about solving uh, it's about solving mysteries. It's got some detective gameplay in there as well. You know, what advice? I feel like there are some purists who are going to be like, well, if I ain't pointing and clicking, it ain't an adventure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, we've had uh, some experience with uh, with people like that already who were like, where's that the interaction bar or where are these icons that I know from like the 80s? And we were like, your inventory. where's your inventory? <laughs> and we were like, we, we got rid of all that stuff. We wanted to like streamline the, the concept and really focus on on like dynamic dialogues and, and uh, less puzzling, no pixel hunting. Uh, there's some stuff that annoys us about point and click games. And yeah, some people will miss those things, I guess, but that's not our vision. I think yeah. it's more like a telltale game yeah. with some detective gameplay in it as well. Yeah, and, and your decisions actually matter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you had me sold with I don't remember exactly where it was, but it was well before you, you, you brought in the idea of like the telltale games and decisions mattering. Uh, <laughs> okay. I hope those didn't turn you uh, off again. Oh, no, no. I mean, like they absolutely did. Like, I mean, one, I'm a big fan of the telltale Batman games. Uh, and I do feel that their decisions did matter, but I mean, Hey, you know, uh, so using that as yeah. a point of reference, uh, to help people understand, like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super on board for that. So, uh, I played the uh, the Walking Dead games by Telltale, the Game of Thrones one, the Borderlands one, and as far as I remember, at, at least almost all of them only had like one ending, which is something that sort of annoyed me because it's all about your decisions and who you decide to be. And it is impactful in the moment and sometimes branches in the story, but I would have liked to see a multiple endings at least. And uh, yeah. sometimes I feel like the whole X and Y will remember this was a, was like a smoke screen because they, they put that there because there was no actual consequences. And um, they did that in place of consequences. Oh, I, but I still love them. I, yeah. I love yeah. the Wolf Among Us. Uh, is I think the best one. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's sitting in my epic library and I've had a handful of people be like, Tom, you need to play that game. And I think I just might. Uh, Tony, uh, thanks. Just, just keep adding to the list. I mean, play it. <laughs> come on guys, dude, I have so many games to play right now. I mean, like star Wars squadrons is out. I oh, yeah. still haven't finished Half-Life Alex, and like I know, I know I'm a virtual person. I should have like completed that on day one, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, uh, we've got Tony in chat who's playing Vampire, Vampire. I, I don't know how it is, how it's supposed it's to be pronounced, time. but uh, you know, yeah. I mean, we could sit down and talk about like the Telltale things because I think that the idea of like uh, uh, the the so-and-so will remember is more a uh, it will affect how likely they are to help you later on kind of thing. Um, but, you know, hey, that that's that's for a different show. Um, <laughs> but so Lacuna, beautiful game. Uh, why did you make the choice to go with pixel art? Um. Well, originally we thought it would be more doable to go with 2D 
rather than 3D, and that's still the case, um, I think. But pixel art, honestly, gotta say, I don't remember what the initial reasoning was, but I can tell you that I like about it that it leaves some, you know, some details to the imagination. Um, that there is, you know, uh, we have a very low resolution pixel art actually, where the people don't even have faces. So you, you know, you can project a lot, I think, on the characters and and the world in general. Yeah. And I also think that um, it is still very easy to produce quickly produce new pixel art assets, especially if you have like someone like our artist, he has, uh, he's set up a whole tool for himself where he can just crank out animations for characters um, in a way that I think wouldn't be possible with like a high resolution art style. Um, well, but little did we know that pixel art has so many extra rules and, and <laughs> problems that come with the territory. We've been making like pixel art specific decisions that other people don't have to worry about with other art styles yeah. for a long time and still are. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, people kind of look. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of developers uh, have a tendency to look at pixel art because it is so you know old. You know, it is pretty much the the classic video game art style, and they think that because it's old, it's going to be easy. Uh, but just because something you know has existed for forty years at this point doesn't necessarily mean that it's simple. No, yeah. it's not. Well, I think if you go with the actual 80s super retro style, it's hard because you have so many restrictions. And if you don't, it's hard because you don't have all these restrictions and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you have to worry about. Like we have um, many, many like deviations from the pixel grid, uh, from the low resolution um, that we made, where we had to at least make a conscious choice to have like smooth scrolling of the camera, a higher resolution UI. Um, um, what, what else we got? We got a higher res um, and turning pixels in our in our particle effects and all that stuff that wouldn't have been possible um, back in the day when resolutions were actually limited. Um, yeah. Either either way, it's super hard. Like mm. either old old and new. But we didn't go with pixel art because we're particularly um, like um how do you say that nostalgic uh it's 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 something that people sometimes assume but it's not the case with us it's um actually i think it helps us because the adventure crowd is tends to be a little nostalgic and they like pixel art but i'm not personally or even though i did play all the old pixel art games when they were new like uh, on my game boy classic but um yeah, nostalgia is only going to take you so far, but having yeah. like a solid style and solid art direction, <clears throat> that's what really helps take you that extra, you know, gets you through the door, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. um, and uh, I will say from the screenshots I've seen and your wonderful, lovely moving background there, uh, <laughs> that you guys have a style and it shows. So... It's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, you well, become kind of blind to it after a while, yeah. and you hope that it looks cool, and you just see the the things that don't really work. Yep, I know that feeling all too well. <laughs> <sighs> you know, I just everybody's all like, "Oh, you have such a great style," and I'm like, "No, I don't. This is the only thing that I actually made. Everything else is <laughs> from an asset pack." Oh, and the well, the soundboard that nobody can see. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh well i do believe you guys uh said that you have uh a a little gameplay demo that yeah. uh, you're willing to show off so let me go ahead and switch over to that screen mm -hmm. nope wrong button right oh, button I, so. I just gotta i have a pug in my lab i need to get rid no. of it. <laughs> silly <laughs> pugs <laughs> Uh, so where's the uh, where's the game? Here we go. I'm still in the. So can you see it all right? Yep. Okay, perfect. So this is a level that's um, that's not at the very beginning of the game because we felt like if we're gonna show a little bit of it, uh, it should be a level that's more representative of what you know what what most of the game is like. Um, but it's still fairly early. It won't spoil super 
super major plot points. Yeah. Well, I mean, either way, with decisions mattering, there's always this distinct possibility that this will play out distinctly differently for you than it would for me or another audience member. Yeah. Um, this one in particular is fairly similar for everybody because it's so early in the game, but the deeper you get into the story, the more decisions you will have taken that um, might have an impact. Um, there are even se certain scenes that you might not get at all if you made a, a wrong turn at some point. But this one's still pretty much the same for everybody. But it can turn out differently. Oh yeah, there are different endings to it. Yeah. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we should go about the dialogues. But like I said, there's a lot of dialogues. Uh, you want to read them or should we just right, we skip some time and I just, I just talk over it and show you the general gameplay? Well, I don't know who Gary is, but he seems kind of gruff. There you are, Conrad. <laughs> Took you long enough. Yeah, exactly right. You get it. Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, he's your partner and like direct your superior. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's, that's a crummy partner who's also your boss. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. He's like in the same unit, but he's like one step above you. Yeah. So, so like you're just a detective, and he's like a detective sergeant. Something like that. Yeah. You're working for secret agency. Yeah. So it's like not a secret. Uh, what do you call? It? It's like an FBI yeah. sort of thing. Okay. But all with like foreign intelligence mixed in. Okay. Uh, it's called the CDI. So it's sort of an FBI, um, CIA mix. Nice. And uh, yeah, since it's sci-fi, it's for the whole planet. So yeah. uh, it's, it's not just a nation. The nations are like planets have sort of taken the place of nations. And uh, yeah, you get to a crime scene. You already received a call from your partner here who told you that that somebody was shot. I I wouldn't like, I, I don't want to spoil who, but it's going to come up in, this, in the story in a second. And um, yeah, you were called to investigate the crime scene. Cool. All right. So let's, yeah, we can just skip through the dialogue yeah. stuff. We don't need me to read everything. Uh, All right. <laughs> also, it's, it's, it, I have a CRT for a face. It's not exactly the best for allowing light in. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, you just get briefed on the situation. The staff is, uh, is not too happy about it. Uh, so the guy who got shot is an important political figure from another planet. And he's here uh, to actually negotiate with, uh, with politicians from your planet. And there's a whole tense political situation in the background of it. And um, yeah, uh, essentially, um, this is a whole, it's a very, very big deal now that this guy got killed, like essentially on your watch. Yeah. And uh, your job is on the line because your unit messed it up, that you're actually supposed to know of, of threats like this. Um, and if, if things really escalate, there might be a sort of a secession war because this, this planet that this other politician is from um, uh, is sort of from a, from a colony that uh, originally belonged to your planet, Gara. Hmm. Well, uh, I, you know, I, I, of course, asked the question of uh, where was his security detail? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were with him, but they're not in charge of like sweeping the place and making sure, you know, uh, they were they were traveling with him through space. So they just arrived there when he arrived because it takes like weeks to get there. Yeah. Um, and uh, the people uh, who were already there were in charge of making sure he was safe. Yeah. So this is uh, the villa where uh, he, he's lying up on the balcony. I'm just running around a little to show you the place. And this is one of your other uh, co uh, colleagues, Young. She's uh, sort of a chemistry expert, and she knows a way. She has a little lab set up there. She knows a way about around this, this kind of stuff and, and uh, takes samples of, of stuff for you. And she helps you in, in, some, uh, in some of those levels. Not every level is a, is a case in itself. Um, but this one is. Cases will later span multiple levels. Um, sometimes you'll have to remember something that happened a while ago. Um, and, you know, but this is a very early, this is the very first case that you get. So um, it's all the information to solve it, you need to solve it is essentially in this level. Yeah. It sounds to me like this is the kind of game you play with a notebook handy. Yeah, yeah, it can be useful. <laughs> we actually intended it uh, that way uh, in the beginning, but then we were like, we, okay, maybe people shouldn't have to take notes. 
Uh, so what we did is we made this uh, thing that we call the cell, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, records, uh, for instance, all the conversations you had. So uh, since I started this playthrough, um, since I skipped all the other levels uh, by cheating, um, you only have these two conversations, the ones that I just had. So you can read up on, on everything again. Nice. And did I see it had a step counter? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get those 10,000 steps in somehow, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we right. it keeps yeah, we track of like how much you detail. smoke. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can smoke in the game. It tracks how much you smoke. We want to make some Steam achievements where, like, if you help Neil quit smoking or if you're, like, a chain smoker, you get different achievements. Oh, um, my God. Well, dude, if I'm a hard-boiled detective, I'm just going to be smoking all the time. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> we didn't want to necessarily promote smoking, but it was, like, with the noir vibes of the <laughs> game, we were like, it needs to be in there. <laughs> and so you get an achievement for smoking a lot, but you also get one for not smoking. Hmm. Neat. Two different playthroughs for me then. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, just this just showed a, a, t a quick tutorial. It's, uh, I, I gotta say, disclaimer: all you see is like early, like not very early, but we're in the middle of production. There might be bugs. It might be incomplete. It's subject yeah. to change. We already have a few changes for this particular level in mind, but I think it gets across what the game is generally like. Yeah. Um, uh, you have this highlight mode, which is optional. Um, you can toggle it, and then you can see that this NPC, for instance, she has a dialogue for me because she has these orange outlines if I toggle it on. Um, so people who don't want to search around uh, for where you know where new information might be, um, they can just use this. Uh, and people who don't want to, who, people who like a challenge can just leave it off. Nice. Um, you'll also see that these guys, none of these guys have a dialogue for me right now. They have this super hardly visible gray outlines, mm -hmm. um, but this might change. So if you talk to somebody about something, this might new, uh, unlock a new dialogue somewhere else. Or if you investigate something, find a new clue, um, th there might be something new to talk about to a certain NPC. Yeah. Um, or even a, a clue might update itself. If you get a new information from an NPC, um, we'll see that in a second, actually. Um, and this is where the, the murder took place. This is the, the get dead guy. I'm not going to investigate him, so you don't, won't see the name. <laughs> I try to spoil as, as little as possible. Uh, and this is what we call investigation mode, where you can use your mouse or you can just toggle with the keyboard or controller um, to investigate things that are nearby. You have sort of this AR module that sort of scans things in the vicinity. And we wanted to... Uh, avoid, like I said, pixel hunting where you need to search for anything that might be of interest. Yeah. So we thought, you know, if you have just an array of, of things that are automatically highlighted, we want to even go to one step further and show the player when they they can, or maybe they when they should turn on investigation mode. Because what we want to avoid is that people just run around every level like this, uh, <laughs> just hoping to find something. Um, because that's not very compelling gameplay. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, like playing the original Batman Arkham Asylum, and it was just like, why would you ever leave detective mode? Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And we had a couple ideas uh, to prevent this. We were like, we could uh, make it so the player can't move while in detective mode, but worst case scenario would be they move a couple steps, <laughs> turn it on again, and do that over and over. Yeah. Um, that Okay, maybe you can't run while in detective mode, maybe oh, in investigation mode. Um, but now we're like, look, you get a little icon, like the cell icon down here, um, which lights up uh, as, a, as a clue, as a hint that you can now investigate something nearby. Um, nice. Yeah. So maybe I, we're still testing. We're going to run a big play test towards the end of the year um, and see uh, yeah, if it, if it works, the new design works. Um, so essentially on the case, um, she just told us that they're still missing the, the bullet and um, you can investigate these buildings. These are all sort of the possible locations from where the, the shot could have been fired. And you're not, um, your, your objective is to find out where the sniper was and, and then go there and find them. And um, once you investigate these buildings, you learn how far away they are, which at this point doesn't tell you much 
and it says the names of the buildings. So you have a hotel, a casino, another hotel, and a tower that's actually an Easter egg for, for something else. Um, and uh, then we have this, this cupboard here. And if you investigate this, um, you'll see that the bullet disappeared into the wall behind it, and the cupboard is locked. So you now probably we need to think, find a key. Yeah, you got to find the key exactly. It's probably stuck in there. And uh, another thing I wanted to show you, oh yeah, there's still the tutorials because it's the first investigation. Um, you can look up all the clues as well. Um, and something we haven't implemented yet, but might want to try is that you can see how many clues there are in a level and they have just this big question mark on them. And once you've found the clue, it'll replace it with the text. So that's another way of preventing people to just run around and search uh, if there's nothing more to find. Yeah. Of course, you know that you're going to run into that person who's going to be like, they gave me five question marks, but I bet there are seven clues. <laughs> yeah, maybe like as an Easter egg in one level, we might do that. But uh, yeah, but then they're then like the achiever type of gamer who's going to do that on there because they want to, right? Yeah. Maybe we can also show the case sheet. Oh, yeah. Right, you you receive these case sheets. This one's very, very simple and short. It just asks you where the shot was fired from. And uh, it can you can input one of the four buildings here. In later case sheets, you have multiple um, sort of uh, prompts. And uh, that means that you have four by four by four, uh, 256 uh, possible answers. This is a very simple one where you can pick one of four if you feel lucky. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's still only a 25% chance to guess because the game doesn't tell you whether your answer is right or wrong. And uh, you only have one shot at everything. Um, there's no take backs um, thing goes for many things in the game. Uh, for instance, you get every dialogue only once. In many, in many um, adventure games, you get this like central node that the game always loops, loop, loops back to. And, gives you all the choices that you haven't chosen before um, to, to, cho to choose then. But that's not actually a choice, right? Um, yeah. You just go through the list. And we have unique dialogues that can't be replayed. And every answer you give is sort of locked in. And the game saves automatically. So there's no take backs. Um, and uh, the same goes for these. So if you want to guess, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't save right away. So if you're in the middle of a level and you accidentally clicked something, you can reload the level. But at the end of a level, it's going to save and you can't go back. Yeah. And this, um, this here, you can select one of, of four. Uh, and if you select the wrong one, the game is going to continue as well. And there's going to be sort of a punishment later. We have these cascading consequences where if you, uh, if you make a mistake here, uh, it might be a disadvantage in a later level. Or you might even not get a level, uh, for so instance. And that leads some... me to my very logical next question, which is, hmm? can you do so poorly that you get fired? You can get, well, <laughs> fired upon. <laughs> um, we, the game has a couple endings and you can get yourself shot. Um, but uh, yeah, that can, that can happen. Well, um, if you decide to go with the you can get fired ending, that is the, uh, the name of the achievement is the, 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 that is the that Tom Clancy ending. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, well, I expect you to get that achievement. Then oh, I'll go after. for it. I mean, if you put that in there, I'm going for it. <laughs> okay, we'll think about it. Um, so, yeah, this is a case sheet. And the, I think one cool thing about case sheets is that you get them, uh, oftentimes you get them uh, fairly early in a case. And you can submit them at some point through the case from that moment on and not necessarily only at the, at the end of the case. Um, so you won't know whether you're already ready to submit the answer. The game doesn't tell you, now submit your answer, you have all clues. Um, yeah. So you might think, I'm ready, or you know, it's, it's up to you. Uh, I could already submit it, even though I haven't talked to most people here and I have, I've missed all the clues, um, that I, will just mean that I, I get probably the answer wrong and then um, yeah, have another disadvantage later. Well, I would hope that you don't get the answer wrong, but, you know. <laughs> no. You made know, the yeah. answer. <laughs> um, 
Uh, oh yeah, one one thing you you see now is that um, figuring out that the bullet is probably stuck in the cupboard. Uh, unlock the new dialogue with this guy. Yeah, he had he didn't have one before, but now I can talk to him, and he um, he's not too happy about the whole situation um, because of the whole political background. You learn it's a bit a bit of world building in this dialogue. He's super pissed, and he he's like, oh you can only stand to profit from from his death so uh you know why should i help you you're probably in on it blah 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 um but they need to work with you and you can decide whether you want to force uh him to give you the key or like appeal to his reason um i'm gonna i'm gonna go and say cooperate now uh, and then he <laughs> does a little pose he strikes a little pose um and yeah, and then his his partner says, "Come on, just give him the key. There's not nothing important in there." And now, when you you can see that this cupboard holds new information as well, because blue means um, you can investigate uh, nice. it again. And if I do that, uh, I open up the the thing. I'll, I'll turn off the outlines again. I, I just uh, fast forward a little. I got some cheats in here. Um, nice. Yeah. And then she's like, okay, uh, the, the bullet's in the cupboard. Uh, I, can, I can have a look at it. She, she eyeballs it and she's like, um, okay, I know this caliber. Uh, this was fired from a, like from a small rifle um, so that, that, can, uh, that isn't very loud. So they can disguise the shot better, but it doesn't go very far. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, uh, we have the distances of all these buildings here. And from our partner, who briefed us at the start, we learned that in the casino, there's an event that night with uh, amped up, with like ramped up security. So that's probably a bad pick for the sniper. Also, if we talk to the secretary down here, she will tell us, this is an optional dialogue, um, uh, she will tell us that she saw his body hit the ground towards the left. So it's probably one of these two buildings here on the right. And um, since only one of them is close enough for the bullet to, or for the rifle to be accurate, um, it's probably Sakura Hotel, uh, this one. Cool. And since I figured that out now, I can go and select it and submit the case sheet. I get a new objective to talk to Young again. Um, and then she gets a new dialogue. And we just played another point and click, an old, like a, not an old game, but with an old design today. And we noticed that no matter your progress in the story, you always have the same like five things you can select from the dialogue that this character has. And there's no change. You can go back to them, even though you learn something new. And we found that super boring and frustrating um, because, you know, if you, if you learn some new information on Lacuna, um, uh, people might talk to you about it. And in this case, you figured out the case. She gets a new dialogue. She's like, okay, uh, report back to Gary, um, your, your partner and superior. Uh, superior. And then uh, you tell him, blah, blah, blah. And then you can make a decision whether or not those bodyguards should be punished or uh, if you want to um, let them off the hook because I'm going to be nice. Um, was that a timer know. that was counting down too? Yeah. Oh. yeah, you have a timer, but we're thinking about making it optional because of accessibility. Some people yeah. just don't read that quickly. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And now finally... Um, you get a you get a inner monologue that's sort of this noir uh, voice actor we have uh, Buzz Blackburn who does an absolutely stellar job of portraying Neil and oh wait uh, I just remembered I think I can smoke over here yeah but we don't have cigarettes oh we don't have any cigarettes <laughs> no <laughs> well oh, you know what uh, this is where I'm just gonna take the camera back for just a brief moment, and I'm just gonna say smoking is bad, and you shouldn't do it. And I quit over <laughs> 12 years ago. So yeah, all right, back to the game. Uh <laughs> we we absolutely agree. Uh, we made it so in this sci-fi scenario, smoking isn't really harmful at all anymore, uh, and it's more of a completely neutral lifestyle thing. Uh, because we, yeah, we didn't really want those implications of it being unhealthy um, and promote that in a way and say it doesn't matter. Uh, we have uh, but, a question in the chat. Uh, yeah. Tony's wondering if the game is going to be, if there are going to be any action elements to the game or is it going to be uh, more just detective focused throughout? There are also several action passages. Yeah. But it's rather punctual. 
uh, yeah, it's it's just in some some rare scenes there's some action, but there's no action gameplay in that sense. There's no um, no quick reactions, no no aiming and shooting, no no platforming. Uh, it's it's never reliant on like hand or eye or coordination because we thought you know the target group of this type of game wouldn't really want that in their game probably also and we didn't want it so um the action scenes are more uh cut scenes you get a, a shootout or two some, some yeah <laughs> some 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 point you have to run some maybe there's uh, something that's blowing up and you have to run from it or if somebody might shoot at you and you're in sort of a standoff but even the standoff where you have your gun out uh, the gameplay is still um dialogue based and you can decide you can just um decide and know uh, whether you shoot somebody by selecting the shoot him dialogue uh, so it's never about um actual aiming and shooting nice well guys thank uh, you so much for sharing that gameplay yeah sure it's actually it's it's a bit of a premiere uh, because we've we've shown it off before but only in german i think this might be the first time where we're showing gameplay live in english ever Take that, Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I got to... Um, this is the end of the level. Of course, it continues here, but um, that's, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Wow. Well, thank you so much for that. That gets a coin. <laughs> gets a coin. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I got a Mario coin sound over here, so... I know ah. it, it, Yeah. So I, you know, you guys get a coin. I don't, I, I don't use this nearly enough. I should really like do something about that. But you know, I get so tunnel vision. You know what's in front of me. Sometimes it's hard to remember that I have this thing over here. So you know, um, <laughs> well, there are like two main questions I have uh, after seeing the gameplay. Uh, first is. Uh, which engine are you using? Unity. Yep, I had a feeling that was coming up. Uh, <laughs> I like, everybody uses Unity. Uh, whenever there's an actual like unreal person on the show, I like I lose a little bit, and I'm like, oh, I love you. Um, and then every now and then somebody comes in and they're like, we're making the game using the Blender game engine, which is the what? thing <laughs> that I found wow. out, and I was like. Are you okay? Is this is this code? Have you been kidnapped? You know. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, I guess the other uh, question I have is, uh, what about you know making this kind of uh, detective adventure game kind of spoke out to you and said, "I need to be made." Well, um, we've been working together creatively for a long time. We we used to. Uh, work uh, like we we did a we staged a play together and did all this kind of different stuff and then we landed on games and i think games are a good way of sort of conveying uh cause and consequence and then conveying responsibility to to a recipient rather than like better than movies or, or any other linear media could and we thought that uh, we want to make a story game where your actions matter and your your, um, you feel the consequences of your moral decisions, but at the same time, we thought it, it would pair well with, um, yeah, with detective gameplay, where you have to really invest yourself in the story. Because I feel like thinking about something and trying to figure it out and um, really wrapping your head around it immerses you so much more than just um, just a story. Um, for instance, there are these types of games that where you like these walking simulators where you just experience a story that happened long before you know, things like everybody's gone to the rapture and these are good but i tend to get bored because i want to be part of it yeah and i want my performance in the detective gameplay or in the game overall to matter and we thought um that was a good fit but we we actually noticed that there's a bunch of problems of pairing story and puzzles it's a nightmare, actually. I don't know why so many <laughs> games do it. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it's, it's hard to find a way to tell a story through the solving of the puzzle unless yeah. the story itself is the puzzle, which, you know, yeah. as a detective game, yeah. 
I mean, yeah. you know, because solving a crime is, you know, finding the story of what happened to the victim. Um, yeah. uh, Tony in chat uh, says that the game is kind of like a cyberpunk Max Payne. And well, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, uh, 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 streamlining it. But yeah, and that's definitely the vibe I kind of get from this, except without like, you know, popping Should pills we... every few seconds okay. while dodging bullets. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and not, um, not as much slow mo. Yeah, but dude, uh, the game looks really cool. Uh, like this is the kind of thing like that I like the kind of game that like I would want to make. So it's really interesting, you know, to see when people come up with something similar to like you know similar but completely different than something that lives in your head. You know, uh, and yeah. Tony, don't worry about that. I'm pretty good with words when I'm actually <laughs> good with words. Uh, which thankfully is today. <laughs> but yeah, uh, anybody in chat have any questions for, for our wonderful pair of developers here? Um, because I feel like you guys covered pretty much everything and going, uh, talking, uh, well, showing off the game, really. Um, but like, you know, the last couple small ones I have is uh, how big of a team are you guys working with? Because I know it's the two of you because you're the co-founders of DigiTales. Yeah. Yeah. And then two more. Yeah. Which is four with four people in the studio uh, working on it um on site. But we also have a shader guy who we who actually works for Mimi Mi Games in Munich. They made um Desperados mm -hmm. three. Uh and he's also our shader guy. We borrow him from time to time. But uh yeah. And uh of course, you know, you got a we got a publisher, Assemble Entertainment, who are really nice. great. Uh, so, uh, from Germany, uh, they help us with a bunch of stuff uh, that we couldn't really do ourselves with all the platforms and localization. Um, and yeah, a marketing. bunch of people working around it. Yeah, marketing. We got our voice actors. Um, but the game won't be fully voice acted. It'll just be those inner monologues because it's it's like 60,000 words or something and we just can't, we can't pay for that. That is a so lot of words. Yeah. <laughs> uh is is your pug in the game uh, um, there is a pug in the game yeah yeah or but it, our pug, but not our pug. it's it's a beige one yeah <laughs> i'm i mean you know a, a black pug would probably blend into the environment too well <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly uh well it has been so lovely having you on the show but before That's i can let you go there is yeah. one last bit that I do on the show every episode that I like to call the five questions. Now, uh, if you aren't familiar or if you're a first timer here in the audience, the five questions are a series of, well, five questions uh, that I ask my guests that have nothing to do with anything that we have talked about so far in the show. Uh, and since there are two of you, I am expecting two answers per question. Uh, All, right. All right. So, uh, are you two ready? Yes. Is that the first question? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I will preface the number of the questions with the number. Okay. So, uh, okay. question number one, what's your favorite sport to watch? Um, I'm going to go with uh, eSports. <laughs> I'll probably... The only thing that I watched regularly was Counter Strike Go, and uh, that's I haven't done that in a while, and nothing since. So that's probably still the answer. I really don't watch sports, but I'd say it's like climbing, maybe. Oh yeah, climbing is fun. <laughs> Bouldering. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, Tony says his favorite is ice hockey. He also wonders why the duck is sitting on the coffee cup, and it was because <laughs> I knew nobody was looking at me while. I was showing the game, so I thought I would put the duck on the coffee cup and see if anybody noticed. <laughs> so, Tony, you get a coin because you noticed the duck. Um, all right, question number two. What do you think will be the next big feature on cell phones? Hmm. I don't know. I think they, they, I think they, they've added already the, 
200 features we don't need, so it's hard to come up with more unnecessary stuff. Maybe something that's related to Corona. I don't know. Oh yeah, <laughs> we have a Corona coronavirus uh, tracking thing here in Germany. Fever. Oh, yeah. Maybe Fever. it'll just <laughs> measuring <laughs> sensor. Oh, that's a good one. I'm thinking maybe something more like augmented reality. Yeah, that's what I saw. Uh, heavy. I don't know. I'd rather have the augmented reality, but I do appreciate <laughs> the the usefulness of a thermometer. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, you can. Well, who? I have no idea. Um, question number three: What is your favorite kaiju? Or what? Uh, uh, favorite kaiju? It's like the you know, like uh, uh, the old Toho Godzilla movies. Those giant monsters. Oh. Oh, I gotta look that up. Actually. Yeah, it doesn't have to necessarily be from Godzilla. There's all sorts of like, I mean, hell, there's you know, like Pacific Rim where they flat out just call them kaiju. Uh, oh. I haven't, I can't, I haven't seen any Godzilla movies. Uh, I haven't seen Pacific Rim either, so I got to pass. That, I, I don't know any. Oh. Man, I'm sorry. To oh, you. it's fine. Godzilla <laughs> movies are excellent. You should watch like all of them yeah tony we just the other day i had the same question come up in the random oh, yeah, selection king and king kong definitely counts as a kaiju i like king kong okay then i'm gonna go with mecha streisen from the south park episode word <laughs> <laughs> i also would have accepted robert smith from the cure uh oh yeah <laughs> right <laughs> nice uh well in question number four what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. Easy for me. Yeah. Dark chocolate. Wait, I, I don't actually know how to pronounce it in English. I'm going to go look it up if that's actually a thing. You know, Yasmin, I thought we were going to be friends there for a moment, but then you said dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> the the non-fun kind of chocolate. Well, look, I, dark chocolate is excellent in certain things. But I feel that ice cream is supposed to be sweet and, you know, like a regular chocolate. It's where you go in that. But, you know, hey, that's your favorite, and I'm glad it's there for you. <laughs> Sometimes it is sweet. The, There's sugar in it. Yeah. The first two I thought of don't actually have any English names. So I'm going to go with pistachio because that's the third, third favorite <laughs> that I actually know the name of. Now I'm curious as to what the other two are. Well, they're called Straziatella, which is, uh, I think, an Italian word, which we also use here in Germany, um, which is a type of, I don't know, it's like a mixed sort of ice cream with chocolate flakes in and it. Vanilla? And I, yeah, it's not vanilla, but it looks like vanilla. And the hmm. other one is like um, Amarena, which is like cherry, yeah. cherry cream mix. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if there's a... I think there's a big cultural difference in ice creams <laughs> around the world. Well, I'm look, man, there there is a whole huge cultural difference when it comes to food. And uh we basically got like all of the crummy versions of everybody else's stuff. You know? <laughs> like I mean, I know that that's not entirely true because like there are great places to find good German food or good Italian food and whatnot here in the States. Um, but it just generally tastes better in places where the where it's part of the culture to cook those dishes. But that yeah. said, though, like one of the cool things we have because we are this huge melting pot, despite what a lot of people in our country would like us to be, uh, yeah. we have these wonderful like fusions of these flavors from people's home countries and added oh, to yeah. the the American stuff, and it's just like. Just stuff that just blows your mind, you know? So, yeah. you know, so we went on that front. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's great. We, we uh, have some, so I actually buy cooking uh, cookbooks. I'm, I'm very retro and I, I like systematically work through them. I love cooking. And um, uh, we have some that are like um, Japanese American, They're like people who are like second generation immigrants who, uh, who like perfected the uh, fusion uh, recipes. Yeah, uh, and those are always fantastic. Yeah, awesome. Oh yeah, 
Well, so, because it's you look at you know these these different recipes that come from these different uh, locales in the world, and you look at it, and they're just individual ingredients. And you go, oh man, like curry powder shouldn't go with like uh, uh, like uh, uh, Carolina style barbecue. But then, like, <laughs> you actually try it, and then you're like, oh, my God, I can't eat anything else, you know? Yeah. Uh, or in Germany, it was where I discovered curry ketchup. And oh, yeah. I was just, that just blew my damn mind. <laughs> uh, because I never would have thought to put – because ketchup is, like, kind of like a sweet thing, but then you put curry, yeah. which has the savoriness to it, and it's just like, oh, my God, it makes everything so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, a, it. <laughs> it's a staple of German street food to have uh, curry curry sausages yeah. with curry ketchup. Yo, German street food is really good. <laughs> it's honestly, I, if I go for street food in Germany, it's usually uh, it's usually with uh, Asians, Asians <laughs> or Turks. But I love curry ketchup. Curry ketchup is great, though. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Well, it, it seems fitting that question number five is is a food question. So, question number five: Does pineapple belong on pizza? Um, I might get murdered, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Do. <laughs> well, you're not going to get murdered. There is a a large ocean between the two of us, uh, <laughs> and also travel up. restrictions. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, but Tony's on my page here, uh, but like, look, man, I'm not going to get on people for what they like. I just think that like warm pineapple is disgusting. Like, it, it is. Just... It's the, the pineapple being warmed up is a bit of a, is the least appealing quality of it. I agree. Yeah, Cause but like it I changes like the texture and changes flavor. the flavor. It just, ugh. Yeah, it's it's cool because it's got this sweet and savory uh, contrast <laughs> that, that uh, quite a few foods actually have. I think just with pineapple and pizza, it's somehow the the controversial one where where sweet and savory doesn't doesn't mix for some people. Yeah, well, for me, it's it's uh, I like my fruit and vegetables like I like my yellowfin tuna raw. Mm -hmm. uh, oh man, I want some sushi now. <laughs> See, they, yeah, they're written they, on that. They put mango pieces in in like maki and stuff, yeah. and it's great. It's yeah. it's fruit with some savory stuff around it, and it's yeah. But it's it's raw mango. Yeah, it's true. It isn't heated it's, up. That's a bit weird. It's, it's it's like with the exception of like you know like coconut flake, which is like I presume fried, you know, like air fried or something like they're baked. Like nah. No, nah, you just no. You don't cook fruit. That's terrible. No, <laughs> I, I mean Actually, except for like bananas, kind of cooked are kind of good though. I will, yeah, I will yeah. freely admit. Um, yeah, my dad brought this recipe. He lived in in Pakistan decades ago, and he uh, brought this recipe home of like salted and peppered uh, fried bananas. Huh. And that's. It's actually fantastic. <laughs> yeah, speaking of uh, fusion in uh, Pakistan, uh, the last time I was in England, uh, we ordered pizza from a Pakistani pizza place, and mm -hmm. it was delightful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you had told me, uh, like when I was a teenager, that that I was gonna that I was gonna a find a a pizza place uh, run by people from Pakistan. And B, then like Pakistani pizza, I would have said, where's Pakistan? Um, but... <laughs> no, that's not true. I knew where all that stuff was. But either way, the joke is funnier that way. But, uh, <laughs> well, it has been an absolute delight having you both on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I've been uh, broadcasting uh, the Digitales Games uh, Twitter account uh, on the little name box I got there for you. Uh, yeah, that thanks. took much longer to make the name box, not accurately writing your Twitter account on there, uh, than I would like, than I would care to admit, but is there anywhere else that people should be going, 
uh, to get information about Lacuna, because uh, you have a Steam page if memory serves as well, yeah. right? So yeah, get out wish there. The game. Yeah, wishlist that it's game. It's actually a short link. If you go to lacuna.game, you'll just be forwarded to the Steam page. But if you look it up, uh, there's only two games with Lacuna in the name on Steam, so it's yeah. one of the two. Uh, and I, I, I played one of them at PAX East like five and a half years ago now, I think. It's it's a very different game than yours. So, um, and yours doesn't take place on Mars, as we discussed earlier on the show. Yeah, no. it's all all made up planets. All fiction. Yeah. yeah, I was slightly sad because you know your background looks like it's on Mars because you got yeah. like the, the like reddish dust and like. But either way, uh, you two, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, Thank you. I, I'm going to double down on what I said earlier on the show. When you are closer to release, we still have all this wonderful avenue of communication. Let me sure. know. I would absolutely love to have you on and help promote the release of your game. So Thank cool. you very much. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be back. Yeah, thank you. Well, I will see you all in just a moment. I'm just going to change cameras one more time when it decides. Are you kidding me? Looking for a game to capture? We're literally in the same game. Yeah, like, see what is. <sighs> All right, I'm going to do this with you guys there. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I know I, like, changed things up at the last second by doing a live show at this time. But thank you all for being here. Tony, Rick, uh, Timmy, uh, 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 just everybody, thank you so much for five seconds. Stop spamming emotes. Oh, sorry about that, Rick. Uh, dude, I gotta tell Nightbot to chill out. Uh, but Rick, thank you so much for being here. It's good to like talk with you for the first time in God knows how long. Um, I'll be back on Sunday. I don't know precisely which time yet because we're still playing this all up in the air. But uh, just remember, wear your mask. I want to travel other places. Drink some water. Uh, have some vitamins, and most of all, be kind to each other because we're all in this together no matter what anybody else tells you. So I'll see you on the next episode of That Tom Clancy Show. But until then, have a wonderful Friday evening and a lovely weekend. Goodbye. <laughs>